Oh, brother. Yeah, brother. Brother sewing machine right here, the HC1850. Uh, going to do a little bit of an unbox, a little bit of review of it. There's not a whole lot out there um, other than what looks like it's been sponsored. And this is not sponsored. I needed a sewing machine for some of the things I do that is not industrial. I do have a, uh, it's, the brand is a tough sew, and I'll take you down into where my sewing room is, so to speak, and I'll show you what it is and what I do with it. So here's my other machine. This is a, uh, what they call a tough sew. It's, a, it's basically a Sailrite clone, or Sailrite's a clone of whatever factory makes these machines, because there's so many of them that are identical uh, in appearance, and it just, uh, labels are different. Uh, there is a difference uh, on the Sailrite machines, though, because they have uh, several upgraded components, and I have done that to this. Uh, the only problem I really have with this one is if I'm getting into a bunch of very, very thick material, uh, let's say I have uh, five layers of umbrella here or something, uh, eventually the needle bar moves. And I replace set screws and ah, drives me nuts because it throws the timing off and then it doesn't pick up the bobbin thread either. Uh, so I have to watch that. Otherwise, uh, this is a heavy duty machine and it is extremely heavy. Uh, I can't just carry this machine without the table. I can't carry that machine with one hand. I have to use two hands. It's probably 70 pounds anyway. Uh, I, I did not buy this machine. I got it on a kind of a horse trade deal. But the table it's mounted on and the servo motor that's underneath, this is all from Sailrite. So this is, uh, and it, I had to do a little bit of mod on the table because this machine has a uh, deeper throat and I like the deep throat. That didn't come out right. I like the extra space in here, especially when I'm working with a big uh, project. Here's a tarp I did. It's a cover for an enclosure. It's uh, 10 foot wide and 16 feet long. And yes, I sewed that down here on this machine. And I'm going to be adding a few little frills to it on some flaps on the side and so on. But um, it came out just fine, and this machine sews it just fine. Uh, give you a little demonstration on this because uh, you're going to see what I can make with that brother that I haven't really played with yet. But we'll see how that one works too. But I'll, what I do on here, I can't do on there. And what I can do on there, I can't do on here. Um, I've got V92 thread in here and a size 21 needle. I couldn't even think of putting that in that brother machine. By the same token, I think that machine probably comes with about a 14 on it. Uh, 14 doesn't really work in here too well. I have gone as far down as a 16 with kind of mixed results. Generally the minimum I'll put in here is an 18. But there again I do, you know, umbrella and canvas and uh, marine vinyl, that type of thing. I'll give you a little bit of demonstration on this machine here. Uh, not sponsored by anybody, not trying to advertise any kind of machines. Just kind of give you a comparison. It's got a couple scraps of uh, marine vinyl here. I'm not going to go through the whole reversing and everything, but I have no idea what this will do. Oh, there we go. And I could take this again and add another layer to that if I wanted to. And this machine will still sew it just fine. I'll fold it over one more time. So I would basically have four layers here. You see there, absolutely no effort. That's four layers of uh, marine vinyl. V92 thread, size 21 needle.
And now I know it's not all perfectly straight and neat and everything, but this is just kind of a for a demonstration. I can do the same thing here with some umbrella. Should cut this with a hot knife, not scissors, but we'll cut a couple pieces off of this. Maybe I'll just sew this one together. No basting tape or no basting or anything. I'm just going to freehand it. Oh, there we are. That's on umbrella. Perfect stitch. But I can't do this on that brother. I, I can't imagine trying to sew something this heavy on that little brother, but I can't sew thin fabric on this very well either, and I'll give you a little demonstration of why. Right, this here is a pretty thin polyester, and I've got some even thinner stuff up there in the loft where the other machine's sitting that I haven't played with yet. We'll uh, run a stitch in here and I'll show you what the problem is. Well there, that walking foot is great on heavy material. You get into this little thin, of course I didn't back stitch on either end so I can pull a lot of that out, but it just puckers horrible. Of course, it, you know, a big needle and heavy thread on this light material is not the ideal combination at all. But uh, I needed to be able to sew this and do work with these center materials and this machine was just absolutely too big and that walking foot makes it kind of a problem and I can't retract the foot on it if I want to freehand. Uh, there are some things I do where I freehand and there's just absolutely no way to do that on this machine. That's why I picked that brother um, because it has a you can retract the feed dogs and I, I guess they call it a quilting machine. I don't quilt but it lets me do that type of thing. Not using the camera I normally use for videos so I'm having to get up and push buttons on having a remote here. Uh, so there's kind of a little overview of uh, the tough sew here and then we'll get back up under the loft and play with the uh, brother. Uh, the brother will probably end up living down here as well. Uh, another thing I should mention is I, you know, I mentioned running with bobbins and running out. I, I put a whole lot of bobbins together at a time and I keep colors. There's black, there's white, there's uh, a brown beige there for that project. There's silver and black in here and I have another case of them around here somewhere and I use a bobbin winder. There's one sitting right back there. Uh, this does have a bobbin winding feature on it as the brother does up there. I haven't played with yet but I prefer to use a bobbin winder. It's fast. So I'll give you a little bit of a closer look at this. I'll get the camera around so you can see what the front of it looks like. Uh, I don't even know if you can get these anymore. The companies. So, but there's other ones. There's so many of them that are the Rex is like this. There's of course a cell right uh, but this extra workspace I'm not going to say what that is again the extra space here is nice this is nine inch where uh, most your regular machines are seven and that extra couple inches makes a big difference when you're running something through it's this big and you're having to roll it all up on one side and there is a long table here on the other side of me that goes all the way to the other wall that for when I'm working on long projects like this well, incidentally, this light right here, I did a video on making that. It was the first YouTube video I ever made. It's making that shadow box light there that I actually use more for a work light. And occasionally I do some photography down here, but it's mostly makes an ideal work light. There, I'll give you a little bit of a closer look at it. And, of course, all my doodads I have sitting there that I use. I know the lighting underneath here is probably going to be absolutely horrible. This is the uh, cell right workhorse servo motor, and you got a nice big pedal. So getting used to the small pedal on a regular sewing machine is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Of course, I put the cell right monster wheel on there along with the posi pin. Makes uh, life easier, and it's something nice to grab onto when you want to manually move it. Okay, up to the loft. 
Uh, what I do with that, I can't do with this. What I can do with this, I can't do with that. So I needed something uh, to sew lighter materials, and this is it. So let's see what's in this box. So we have oh, a power cord, that'll come in handy. Bag of accessories there. And I assume this is the auxiliary shelf. This is also uh, for quilting, so you can do uh, free sew with it, which is something I can't do with my other one. And we have a rather substantial manual and a DVD. One each foot pedal. Guarantee you one thing, my other sewing machine you won't pick up with one hand. Yeah, it looks like we've got a bunch of little pieces of tape to pull off of here, so I'll get that done. One of the things that made me look towards this particular model uh, was not that it does 100, 174 different stitches, I don't care about that so much, but I, it's uh, mostly used for quilting, but it can also be used for some other applications, is you can lower the feed dogs. Now that's the uh, little feet that are underneath the presser foot by moving this lever one way or the other here, like this, that drops the feed dogs down and then you can freehand sew. For now, we'll leave that up. Give me a little bit of a look at the other side. Boy, I can't believe how light this thing is compared to my other one. And you got all of your different stitches here. We'll get into the details on that in the later video. I'm not gonna do a teach you how to sew thing. And there should be some accessories in here, and there are. A little bag of goodies here. So that's, I know that's for doing buttonholes. And we have some needles, it doesn't say what size. A little, oh I thought that was a screwdriver at first, it is not. And there is another package of, that's a double needle, right there. And then we have, these are size 14s here. Then we have uh, some spare bobbins, and two, three, and I think there's one in the machine, so that gives me four. And we got some pressure feet here. For ones and I wonder if we got a cording foot in here. Does not appear that we have a cording foot, but I know those are easily available. That's something that I I use quite a bit. I know that uh, you can't have this on to put on the little table here, and this has some feet on it. Fold down, three of them. And this slips in over here. Nice little ruler on there. Yeah, there is a bobbin in there, I can see it. Okay, now that you've seen everything that comes with it and how this little extension cable table goes on before I'm gonna actually show how it's used, I need to learn to see how it's used because this is just like way different than what I am accustomed to, uh, as you saw with my uh, industrial machine there. So no servo motor here and things are in a different place and so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of uh, learning on this. So I'm gonna do that before I get into this and show you how I use it or how to use it and also how I use it. So after playing with this for about an hour, I've tried some different stitches. On it, I like to say I'm usually just straight stitch. That's what I do when I do upholstery and canvas. But uh, yeah, there's some nice stitches here. It, uh, stitch length is I can get down to two millimeter. I you might even be able to go smaller than that. I know I can go only go up to five. I tried some of the uh, decorative things here. Just a couple of them to try them. Fool around. Now you see right here. This is one of the, this is the first zigzag stitch I did. And you see the big glob there. When I put
put the bobbin in, I didn't get that into the little spring in there for the tension, so I had no lower tension and it really messed things up. Uh, this one here, I started out with this design and then I stopped and I made the stitch wider just to see how it would look. This is some very, very thin fabric here. This is actually somewhat difficult to sew. Uh, it's impossible to sew on my other machine. Uh, the, I can't get a needle small enough. There's a 14 in this. Um, I don't even know if I could put a 14 in that one. Right now I got a 21 in there and I'm using a V92 thread. So as you can see that doesn't, it's a huge difference. Otherwise uh, this worked real well. Gonna see some of the stitching on there and it's freehand. So yeah, it's a little bit crooked but wanted to see how fast it would go and if you turn this up to high speed and you can really cook along. So let's try something that's a little difficult to sew and that's velvet. So I made this little drawstring bag here just real quick out of uh, velvet and velvet is notoriously hard to sew without everything coming undone and it bunching up and you know, I didn't get my corner pushed out all the way. But I can do that with a pencil. There we go. So, nice little drawstring bag. Made out of velvet, little scrap. I say velvet can be a little finicky to sew with if you've ever never done it. Uh, same with some of the knit materials that'll just kind of want to bunch and scrunch and but I'm not here to give sewing lessons, I'm just going to talk about this machine. So is there anything about it I don't like? Well, threading this to get it into the pickup arm at the top was a little bit finicky. Uh, once I finally got it hooked over there, it, it worked fine. Uh, the bobbin, it's, I missed the spring when I put the bobbin in the first time. Of course, if I probably, if I would have looked at the book instead of just a little diagram on here, that probably would have helped, but I didn't bother to look at the book or watch a DVD or anything. The bobbin loading is pretty self-explanatory, a little picture right here, and it, it loads the bobbin fine. Um, I have a bobbin winder that I use on my other machine, and I can use it on these bobbins too, and it's a lot handier than having to unthread the machine and fool around with all that, but otherwise this does work. Um, as far as auto shut off on the bobbin wind, it kind of gets up against here and rubs and then just kind of stops and stalls. It's not the, the kick out like uh, you see on some other machines. Uh, the foot pedal on this, it's adequate. I'm used to the servo motor on my big machine. I, I have some things to get used to here. For example, when I want to reverse a stitch here, I'm automatically reaching over here for my reverse, but that's not where it's at. It's a button over here. And just same as uh, raising and lowering the presser foot, right here, and it is handy being right here, but I'm used to it being up here. So then I'm reaching up here and it's not there. So just got to get used to something different is all. Otherwise I'm pleased with this so far and uh, as I say this isn't sponsored and I'm not here to give sewing lessons. I'm not a expert tailor or anything. I can do upholstery and I do canvas and I do big heavy stuff. Uh, as you saw on my other machine there I've got a, a piece set I'm going to add some sides to. It's uh, 10 feet wide and 16 feet long. So, you know, there's some serious uh, sewing there. Oh, now one thing I do like about this is I can see how much thread is on my bobbin. And my other machine, I can't do that. There's nothing that ticks me off more than they'd be going on a, you know, a 10 or 12 foot stitch and run out of bobbin thread and not see it right away. Then have to go back and restitch that. And if you're doing something like some umbrella, I don't care how careful you are, you're going to see it. So that, I always have uh, a big stock of bobbins up and always a bunch of them loaded. And if I do, let's say, a 20-foot uh, stitch on a piece of canvas, even though there's some thread left on that bobbin, before I do that next 20-foot stitch, I'll be changing that bobbin to make sure I don't run out. I've been there, done that too many times. So anyway, um, I bought this on Amazon. I thought it was reasonable for what I needed it for. Oh, one other little disadvantage is uh, I've got magnets I use on my bed on the other machine when I'm doing long hems or seams and I can't do that on here because this is plastic and the magnet won't stick to it. 
but it's kind of a minor thing. I just have to watch what I'm doing, I guess. And of course, I'm not going to be doing any huge projects with this. It's mostly little things, uh, you know, like little velvet bags. They're a pain to sew, though. Velvet, and you get little velvet dust powder everywhere. So do a lot of these, you'll be cleaning the machine. Okay, got to do a demonstration, I guess. So I'm going to pick stitch 20 here. I got the right foot in there. I am using the foot pedal. I could use this, but I'm the foot pedal hooked up, so we'll use that. It actually pulls it pretty straight. I am keeping my fingers on the corner. Just in case something gets wonky here. Oh, that's the line I just did down here. Of course, I did that once again up there. Do a line here with number 12. Got that in here, got foot in, got it on there. And there we are. Okay, if you're curious on how to do the letters, I did my name up here. I will show you how to do that on the little pad here. You're going to get down here to your numbers. You got to move this over to the letters. Oop. There we go. So I'll make sure there's nothing in there right now. So. Let's say you want to put shop in there, we'll do. So enter 19, get the plus, and the H is uh, 8. Get the plus, and O is a 15. The plus, and the letter P is a 16. Hit the plus. I need to set your material in there. Of course, you want to make sure you got the end foot in there. And when it's done, it'll stop. And so there we have it. You do a little thread trimming, of course. One of the other reasons I wanted a machine like this was to be able to make custom flags. And, you know, we do a lot of sublimation here, and I've made some custom ones, but I'm kind of limited to what size I can make because I had no way to sew any custom sizes. Um, as you saw with that thin polyester material, this machine just breezes through it. But as you saw on my tough sew down there in my sewing room, it's the basement of the house actually, it 
Tucker's material terrible, and it, even when I put a smaller needle in it, it doesn't just it just doesn't do the trick. Uh, and what I mean by custom flags is here's one here that I need to make a new one of. It needs a little work. It's uh, kind of in sad shape. So what I'll be doing is I'll be using this machine to uh, sew the hems and so on on the uh, pieces of polyester. It's a double layer and I'll get a little bit heavier fabric than this otherwise the uh, sublimation will bleed through and you'll be able to see it from both sides and we don't want that or we'll put a piece of fabric in between and then here this is a piece of webbing that I will sew on with the tough sew the other machine down there then I'll just put the grommets in as needed for this flag or um, for whoever wants whatever size flag and I can sublimate up to 13 by 19 here. Actually, 16 by 20 is how big my press will go. So I can do some pretty good sized things on it, but you can't just like go buy flag set size. You got to kind of make your own. There is the uh, stock, you know, garden flag. That's actually what I was playing with on here was a one that was a little messed up. So there's one of the other reasons I wanted this, be able to... Uh, do these custom projects like this. So that's all there is to this. So I'll be a link in the description if you'd like to get one. Again, it's, yeah, I'm not sponsored, but otherwise, uh, especially if you're a beginner, this would be right up your alley. This is really easy to use. I didn't even open the book. It's still over there in the plastic. I haven't watched a DVD, any of that. Um, everything here is self-explanatory. You just figure it all out on your own pretty quick. If you've done any sewing before, it'll, it'll come right to you. So if you got anything out of this, appreciate getting the thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Roger in the loft above the shop. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.